Initiative. Welcome to an amazing first day. Uh, it has been an absolutely incredible program, and we have something really cool coming up for you next. Uh, my name is Ray Redacted, and this next session is called No Mom, I'm Not a Hacker. Now, before we get into that, I do want to take a moment to thank the sponsors, the wonderful sponsors for Diana Initiative. Uh, without which we wouldn't be able to do any of these things. And I want to remind you to go to the Career Village where they're doing resume workshops and mock interviews today. So make sure you stop in and see there. Now, we have a very special talk coming up. Uh, Danielle Knust is a first-time talker, speaker, first-time speaker, I should use the right terms, uh, who's going to explain to us why the blue team rules, why the blue team is so cool. Now, you're going to leave here knowing how to elevate the blue team profile in your organization and how to convince other people to come over to the blue side. Now, Danielle has a broad technical background with focuses on network security and threat hunting. She works with complex global organizations, including large pharmaceuticals and financial institutions. And she is a subject matter expert and she is going to educate us. So please let's give a Diana initiative. Welcome to Danielle and no mom. I'm not a hacker. Thanks, Ray. And thanks everyone for coming. So my name is Danielle Knust and I work for Security Risk Advisors. We're a boutique security consulting company. So I've been in security for a couple years now and every time I tell someone that I work in cybersecurity, everyone immediately says, wow, so you're a hacker? And I mean, even my mom tells all her friends that her sweet little girl is a computer hacker. So I'm here today to say, no, mom, I'm not a hacker. But let's take a look at that. Let's take a step back. When did hackers become the epitome of cybersecurity? So hackers have been prominent in the media since the 60s. The hacker image has evolved from people who just love computers, had big glasses, were good at math, to a cool, hoodie-wearing, hip teenager sitting at a Starbucks trying to crack a password. What the media shows really changes how people view cybersecurity. But as we all know, there's a whole other world to security. There's blue teams, red teams, purple teams, assessments, vulnerability, and so many other areas working behind the scenes to keep our cyber world safe. So I'm a blue teamer and a pretty passionate one. So I wanna dive into the contributions that blue teamers bring to the table. Oftentimes when people do understand that I'm a defender and not an attacker, they almost always think of a security operations center or a SOC. Well, although 24 by seven defenses are at the core of blue teaming, there are so many other aspects and roles for blue teamers. There are almost just as many definitions and roles for blue teamers as there are blue teams out there. Depending on your organization, your structure, your team, the definitions of scope of a blue team might change, but essentially we're the lay of the land experts. We know our companies inside and out. We oftentimes understand the critical components of our company and what our crown jewels are. I mean, after all, you have to know what you're defending in order to protect it, right? We often are known for having breach mentality. We're vigilant. We look for gaps in our environment. I like to say we leave no stone unturned. And a lot of times we work with other teams like the red team to strengthen our defenses together as a group. So essentially there's so much that we do as blue team that shapes the defenses of cybersecurity. And a big part of that is the wide range of roles that are available to blue teamers. So I didn't talk much about my background, but I didn't start, I didn't study cybersecurity in college or really formally at all. I actually studied manufacturing. And at that time, very few people were talking about cybersecurity and manufacturing. I actually had, I think I only had one professor during one lecture who mentioned cybersecurity and it was something to the tune of, oh yeah, one day I think we'll have to look at that because there's a lot of computers on the shop floor these days. But today I'm working on a project where I'm focusing solely on security and manufacturing and increasing visibility and defending manufacturing systems. So 
Blue teamers aren't just defending computer networks anymore. Our world has evolved technologically in a way that people five years ago would never have imagined. We're defending hospital equipment and water chemical treatment plants and life-saving medicines and so many other critical components of our everyday life. The only way that we can truly do this is through the passion and interest of expanding our knowledge, partnering with other teams, learning about all these different areas of security and really strengthening our skills as defenders each and every day. So like I said, there's a lot of different roles for blue teamers and I've captured a couple of different areas here and these are mostly as they relate to my career, but keep in mind that different companies, different industries and even different teams within the same company may have a different way to break down these roles. So for me, one of my first roles as a blue teamer came a couple years into my career when I joined a hunt team. I was the new kid on the block and I became infamous for asking questions. At first, I was pretty shy and afraid to ask things, but soon it just became ingrained in me and was part of my brand. I asked why everywhere. Why are we using these logs? Or what are those logs? Hey, where are the logs over there? Or why don't we use these? What is this process? Why is this our process? Why don't we work with the engineering team? Or why are we doing it this way? Asking all these questions really sparked conversations and challenged the team and challenged the norm in a way that hadn't been done often before. This is really critical because attackers are constantly changing and we must constantly change and challenge our defenses as well. When the Hunt team started working on purple team engagements with our red team, I continued that train of asking why. Why did we do that? Why did you do it that way? And why not this way? I learned so much about attacker mindset, attacker mentality, all through these experiences and asking questions. One of the exercises was in AWS, and I learned about VPC logs and what they look like and where to find attackers lurking in the logs. If any of you have ever worked with VPC logs, of course, depending what's turned on and where it's going and how it's configured, they can be pretty messy and hard to understand. So asking lots of questions really helped me clarify things. Well, a couple years later, when the time came and I was working a breach, all of those times where I asked why and learned in these experiences really came to play when I was tracking down an attacker in real time. So never be afraid to challenge the status quo. Be curious, ask those questions. Throughout my career, every experience that I've had in all of these different areas has really made me a better defender. Every time I step into a new role or dive into a new opportunity, I expand my knowledge and experiences and strengthen myself as a defender. Security is too large of a field and it's changing every single day. We have to learn and dive into all these different areas or we'll never be able to protect every aspect of our lives that's touched by technology. Blue teams really do touch so many areas of security from architecture and engineering to incident response, to hunting, to purple teams, and so many other areas. If you haven't had the opportunity already, I highly encourage you to try something new. Dive into a different area you haven't experienced before. Maybe become an expert in a domain that's new to you, or just continue to expand your knowledge deeper into one of the areas that you're passionate about. Whatever it is, just continue to strengthen your skills as a defender. So I'm clearly pretty passionate about blue teaming and what we do, but maybe you're not convinced yet. So let's talk about what you can gain from giving blue teaming a shot. As I mentioned earlier, there's so many variety of roles in blue teaming that one of the big opportunities is to develop a wide range of skills. The applications for blue teams are endless. You can dip your toes into several different roles, learn about different domains, try different areas. Maybe you find something you're curious about in one of these domains and you dig a little deeper, become an expert in that. Being a blue teamer gives you that opportunity to expand your horizons and really broaden your skills. Another big one that I think is often overlooked in security is talking to the business and connecting with your customer. 
This is really important. Blue teamers are often the ones creating the defenses and security measures. And a lot of times our business partners don't see the same vision of security the way that we do. And as blue teamers, we have the responsibility to explain these defenses and how they're gonna affect the people that we're implementing them. But this is an exciting part for cyber. We're designing and advancing defenses. And at the end of the day, we're making big changes and strides in security for these protections. So start with learning about the business. Understand what you're protecting. Partner with your business and have them explain to you what's important to them. If I were to go to a senior leader and tell her that she needs to prioritize security because attacks are constantly growing, we created this new standard and it's a requirement and she just has to follow it. Well, this might not go over too well. She might ignore it or put it on the back burner because it could impact her business or maybe it affects the bottom line or negatively affects the employees. There's so many things that she's thinking about as a business leader that we may not take into account. So let's change the narrative. Let's talk about those crown jewels we mentioned earlier. Maybe that's customer data that they have. Maybe it's proprietary information that makes the company unique and ultimately successful. So now let's paint the picture of how without adding these additional security measures, those become vulnerable. Maybe you partner with the red team and do a purple team engagement and prove in real time how they're vulnerable. vulnerable. Essentially bring the message to the business and explain it in their terms. That's really the key here. At the end of the day, these defenses have a huge impact on security and the company. So as a blue teamer, you get to be that person that shares the message and that's exciting. We're making changes. Another one here that I'm pretty passionate about is thinking out of the box, asking why. As a blue teamer, you get the opportunity to really learn the ins and outs of your environment. Become the expert of what's normal and start to see when things are unnormal in your environment. Hackers only need to find one way in, but as a defender, you have infinite ways into your environment that you have to protect. This forces us to think out of the box. Partner with your red team. Learn that attacker mentality and try to see how they do things. Maybe come up with crazy hypotheses and test them out. I one time had a coworker who had a little notebook and anytime he had a crazy idea, he would just jot it down. And some days he would come into work super excited and put the notebook down and he would say, I have an idea, let's run with it. And oftentimes we did. And some of those ideas led us to increasing our defenses in incredible ways. And we're actually really fun to track down and learn from. So don't be afraid to just throw out a crazy idea you have. So I actually believe that this right here is one of the strengths that diversity brings to security. So people with different backgrounds, whether it's race or gender or upbringing or education or whatever your differences may be, the fact that we're different means that we have different approaches to solving problems differently. And that is a huge strength to security. We have to continue to encourage that diversity. If you can remember back to the first slide I showed about the history of the hackers, sadly, there's not a whole lot of diversity in this picture, especially not in the media component. Well, it's time for us to start to break those barriers. Let's diversify our field because I would argue that that's actually a really critical component that'll help us improve our defenses. If we can continue to develop the diverse blue teams and expand our solutions, the possibilities for blue teamers are endless. So blue teams, as I mentioned, are large. There's lots of rules, they're broad, they span a, a bunch of domains. And that can make developing and elevating your blue team even more critical than before. So I want to start out with the idea of making your blue team a destination, not a hoop or a stepping stone. In some of my experiences, I've had companies that make blue team roles a requirement or a prerequisite to become maybe a red teamer or some other elevated role in the team. And I don't think we put enough value and emphasis on the blue team as a destination. As you saw throughout my presentation, there's a whole lot to do in blue teaming. So let's get some people to stick around. One of the best ways to do this is provide opportunities for blue teamers. 
Don't make blue teaming just actioning boring alerts. Now, don't get me wrong, that's super important. It has to happen, but let's add some fun to it. Let's add some fun opportunities, some fun roles, make them available to everyone. There's definitely no shortage of things to do on the blue side. So let's make, let's increase that and make our teams a destination. This feeds right into my next point of encouraging skilled members to mentor and teach your younger members. Without the mentors that I've had in my career, I wouldn't be where I am or as passionate about what I do. This doesn't have to be forced or standardized, but just recognize your skill members and encourage them to mentor others. In my experiences, having mentors has led to so many informal training opportunities. Don't get me wrong. One of my favorite training courses I ever took was a SANS course on hacker tools and techniques but not all training has to cost upwards of six grand. I once had an opportunity with the teammate where we would have weekly sessions and she would give me a topic to work on. So for example, the first topic was exploit kits. And I would spend a week researching everything I could about exploit kits from how they worked, different kinds of exploit kits, different types of exploit kits, people that have used exploit kits, anything I could. And every time I learned something, I would dig a little deeper down the rabbit hole. The following week, we would sit down and we'd talk about it. I'd whiteboard it out for her, tell her what I learned. She might fill in some gaps for me. And we just had a conversation. This was one of the best training opportunities I had. And it was totally free and just took some time. The biggest thing with training is however you can do it, whenever, whatever is available to you, just keep on learning. Hackers are constantly changing their techniques. And if we want to be able to defend against them, we have to continually invest in our blue teamers trainings and learning opportunities. If we fail to do that, we run the risk of falling behind the attackers and ultimately leaving our environments vulnerable. Our teams also become stronger when we support and strengthen each other. Part of this is based on the culture that we create within our team. I think that creating a culture where everyone stays in the know needs to really be the norm. Whether this means that Everybody chats about the latest security blogs or newest trending articles on Twitter. Or maybe you have a culture where everybody blocks off the first 15 minutes of the morning and reads a couple new articles while they drink their coffee. For me, I used to have an hour commute to work and I would listen to podcasts on my way to work. And then I would talk to colleagues and friends about what I heard and the world news. Don't forget that what happens politically and socially in the world also molds our defenses and attacks. So. Whatever you do, the key here really is just to find what works for you, but mold that into your culture. So as my dear friend Wonder Woman once said, if no one else will defend the world, then I must. And when people ask me if I'm a hacker, I say, no, I'm not a hacker. I'm a blue teamer and a pretty proud defender. Thanks everyone. Wow, that was awesome. How do you think that went? Pretty good. Well, it was stellar. So, um, okay, but there are some questions. We do want to know what your mom says. What does your mom say? <laughs> well, my mom is not here, but I'm sure she'll watch this later on YouTube. So okay. I'm sure she'll have lots of opinions later. Um, you got some amazing feedback on the point about diversity makes for stronger teams. And we do have scientific evidence to back that up, that teams that are, have more diverse viewpoints. But what, what do you think the hesitation is on the blue team side to have more diversity of thought and background and gender and identity and everything else like that? Why is it not happening quickly enough? Um, so I think that it's not happening quickly enough across our whole industry. I don't think it's unique to blue team, but I think that in the blue team side, and of course I might be biased because I'm passionate about blue team, but I think we have more to gain from diversity. I think we have a lot of problems to solve, a lot of gaps to review. And I think that the more diversity we can add to our teams, the more um, problems we can solve, the more options that come to the table. Um, and that'll just help us kind of bridge that gap even quicker. Well, great job. Everybody loves Blue Team as a destination. And uh, thank you very, very much for uh, blessing us with this first presentation. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, everyone, for listening. <laughs>